Milwaukee who have come together to work for the Water Council through the Lead to Succeed program. Their website, teamwater.com, aims to inform youth about the importance of water. We interviewed some local water-based organizations and made a video. We hope you enjoy our video and gain some excitement about water resources in Milwaukee. We are volunteers from the Lead to Succeed program. We are working with water service based projects and we would just want to ask you a few questions about your organization. Okay. Okay, the first question, um, could you give us an explanation on what aquaponic systems are and how they benefit the community? Sure, absolutely. So aquaponics systems are, uh, it's a way that to grow fish and plants together in a recirculating water system. So it's, an, it's a miniature ecosystem. And so when people practice aquaponics, no matter how small or how big uh, that you're practicing aquaponics, you have to take care of an ecosystem. That means you're not only taking care of one type of organism, you're taking care of your fish, you're taking care of your plants, and you're taking care of your microbiology too, which are the small little bacteria and fungus and other things that live in your system. And I think that the way it helps the community is it helps people realize um, how to take care of the environment. If you can take care of a small little ecosystem, um, I think you can think a little bit better about how to take care of a bigger ecosystem. Also, it's a way to produce food, and which is really important for communities. I think all communities should have access to healthy and fresh food, and aquaponic systems are a way to do that. Right. Um, how does your organization impact the environment? Hmm. So the whole reason that our organization started was to localized food production. That means to produce food uh, for your local neighborhood. And, and that in itself is, is good for the environment because uh, right now a lot of our food comes from uh, faraway places. California, Mexico, Chile, South Africa. Um, and the food that comes from these places has to travel a long way. We're using a lot of energy to get the food there. Um, and so if we decrease the number of miles that food travels, uh, we're helping the environment. Um, aquaponics helps to conserve water, too, uh, which is really important. We use a lot less water in aquaponics than we do in regular farming systems. So those are a couple of the ways that uh, aquaponics can uh, really have a positive impact on the environment. So why is this service probably important for the environment? Uh, well, removing buckthorn is important for the environment because it's an invasive, non-native tree and it's from Europe and it's kind of created a, an area that is just solely buckthorn over here. So we're removing it so that we can plant some native plants that are good for wildlife and to support other diversity. And then we're making these fascines, which out of the buckthorn that we've cut down, so that we can put them on slopes that are eroding. And that way it'll control the hillside a little bit more and stabilize it. We consider ourselves a community environmental education center. So we work with schools that are all within a two mile radius of each center because those are working with kids where the green space that we're located within is in their own neighborhood. So it's not sort of a foreign thing way out in the country that they go to for education. It's their green spaces and parks right in their own community and they can come back to and visit with their families. And then um, we also provide uh, equipment lending and and other things for community members. So anyone who's a member within the community can come in and borrow canoes and kayaks and skis and snowshoes and gardening equipment and shovels and rakes so that everyone doesn't necessarily have to own all of those things and store them themselves. They can come in and utilize those. We also provide space for uh, neighborhood meetings and community groups to hold meetings within the center. And I think that's a great way just for them to have space to gather. And then just general gathering spaces. People come in and um, sit in the lobbies and drink coffee and chat with their neighbors. And it's a good place to gather. What does your application So I'm the senior land steward at the Urban Ecology Center, which means I'm uh, in charge of the land management on all three of our branch sites. Uh, mostly it's habitat restoration. So we do a lot of removal of invasive species that are kind of decreasing diversity and choking out some of the native species. And then we go in and we increase biodiversity. So anytime that we're increasing the habitat diversity on the site, we're helping create better um, food and forage for our local animals. 
as well as great recreational space for the students. I think our, um, our membership price for our family is currently about $35, and to be able to come in and utilize the space and gather with friends and kids and to be able to borrow all of that equipment for free is a, is a great bargain. And I think uh, it's, a, it's a good way. We're always happy to, we go into a space hoping to revitalize it. Are you taking to improve water quality in order for neighborhoods to be revitalized? Okay. So I have to as a human being that is an organization. <laughs> <laughs> so the processes are somewhat complex, and I could answer this question simply, or I could answer it very simply. Either go in a complex fashion. Yes. And the question itself brings up a question to me as to where does the water fall? Uh, and the water falls mostly on the and the river falls directly in the river. So if you're interested in protecting the water quality, the process that you have to be aware of is how the water gets in the river, where it comes, and what happens to the water as after it falls on the land before it gets into the river. All right? So one way to do that is to build a billion dollar tunnel and catch excess rainwater and stuff off the street, which is right over there. You probably don't, maybe you do know. So there's a billion dollar tunnel called the Deep Current Project, but there's a, an efficient way of doing that costs less money and makes our, our landscape much more attractive or beautiful or friendly. And that would be called what you see from this point all the way up the river for about eight miles and then further as you move along the Milwaukee River uh, into the other counties. That we could call a green sea. Got some money to buy land from the Knowles Nelson Stewardship Fund. And you all should know Gaylord Nelson and Warren Waters. Uh, Gaylord Nelson is the senator and former governor of Wisconsin who started Earth Day. So this fund, and Warren Nelson was a Republican governor who also believed in environmental rights. So we have the Democrats and the Republicans working for the same goal at one time. And now we've named this money after that, I hear a <laughs> uh, So that money helps us buy this property, it gives you half the money, and buy the trail over here and preserve uh, at the mile, like over a mile of the river corridor, making a nice green scene. The sewage district, NMSD, the guys who built the building by the tenants, gave us money. Because this would be a natural way to help keep the water clean. So when it rains, it flows down towards the river. If you have a forest or a prairie that lifts and plants that fill over the water, you just have all parking lots and roofs. It goes directly into the river. And the water on the street is going to... So how long have you been working in Milwaukee? And uh, what are some of your accomplishments? Uh, well, the organization has been in existence since 1994. It was involved in planning for improved public access and eventually the preservation and other issues that we talked about. Uh, we celebrated our 15th. I think we're coming up on our 20th anniversary. Uh, what have we accomplished? You're sitting on one of the things. This is a, a, a non-motorized boat uh, launching area. It's made out of Wisconsin bedrock called Niagara Dolomite. So this is a, a, a project that we did which allows people to put their canoe in. And I would all invite you back to come use the canoe that's right over there sometime. And we'll have a kayak down here as well. Uh, 
one other thing that we did, which I, is build a couple of trails, which provide access, and plant many, many trees, including thousands of, of native trees in the valley, after removing some invasive species. The trees uh, that we planted are on both sides of the river. Uh, the trails we put in are on both sides of the river. On the east bank, it's called the East Bank Trail, and that uh, provides access for pedestrians and bikers and dog walkers from from the old dam site that we were standing on all the way up to uh, Riverside Park by the Urban Ecology Center. Uh, we're our partners with the Urban Ecology Center in the uh, creation of the Arboretum Project and our offices here are also part of another big land deal uh, to meet those goals. On this side of the river it took a little bit longer, in fact it took uh, 1995 till 2010 to get the Beer Line Trail in. It's called Beer Line because it was an old railroad corridor. One of the major customers was the Schlitz Brewery downtown. Uh, but that's a bicycle trail. You might see the alderman riding his bicycle downtown along the Beer Line Trail because he lives right next to it. Or you might see a friend of mine uh, who happens to be in a wheelchair going home from the Pick and Save food store on this trail. You know, so she's going through the woods rather than dealing with traffic. Those are kind of great things to bring people in. How does your organization work within the community? 16th Street um, has a really large history of working, or I guess a long history of working within the um, community. Mm -hmm. uh, its main patient base is in the south side of Milwaukee, and so we work in the area codes the five two, or the five, five three, three two, two one five, I think. Mm -hmm. um, mainly that uh, entire south side area is where we draw our patients from. Uh, the environmental health department has a kind of different focus. I work mostly with the environmental health department, and they've had a history with working with the Menominee River Valley mm -hmm. as well as the greater community um, and all of Milwaukee actually for their lead outreach program. So um, for our lead program, reducing lead in family homes, uh, we've looked at all of Milwaukee and so that's our bigger impact than just the patients we see on a day-to-day -day in the clinic mm -hmm. side of things. Okay, nice. I like that, you know, it's a long history and I mean it seems cool, you know, all the different projects that you guys are working on. Mm -hmm. All right, the second question. What volunteer opportunities do you offer for people in the community? Well, the Environmental Health Department specifically has a lot of volunteer opportunities around the Kinnikinnick River Project. Maybe I could back up and talk a little bit about um, what they do with that. Um, uh, so the Kinnikinnick River has had a kind of troubled past. In the 70s, the Army Corps of Engineers put in a concrete channel because they thought that uh, a structure that was completely straight could get the water out to Lake Michigan as fast as possible. And though that worked at the time, they didn't anticipate the growth that Milwaukee would have and the different um, city structures that would come with that. So in making more of the city concrete and increasing the number of people who live here, we use more water and a lot more water runs off when it rains. So they didn't anticipate all that increase and because of it we have a lot of flooding now the days when the concrete channel is kind of worn down. And so the city of Milwaukee has plans with the um, MMSD, which, which is the Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewerage District, and they have plans to remove the concrete. And we're working with families to um, make sure that the community they build there is more um, uh, in tune with the river and more naturalized, or more accustomed to the naturalized river when that comes in. So. Um, that's the kind of community that we serve now. The volunteer opportunities we have, sorry to answer the question, um, uh, are really surround that project. And so some of the volunteer opportunities we have are to do river cleanups. We have one every fall and one every spring. And we partner with Milwaukee River, Cre river Keeper, which is a different organization um, to get people out in the community and clean up what's actually in the river. But we also have other volunteer opportunities like uh, you all helped us out with a mural of MLK um, on MLK Day, and that's part of our outreach. Um, how do we give back to the community that gives so much to us? That's really nice. Right. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, how does your organization impact the environment? 
we look at the environment as really connected with health. Um, that's a key foundation of public health, which is a really cool field that I suggest you all um, look into. But basically the idea is that if we build a healthy environment, people can live healthily inside of it. And so the, and I guess the contrast to that is that if the environment isn't healthy, it's very difficult for people to be healthy. So I guess if you look at how the river is now, the concrete channel, there's not a lot of area for people to walk along there. There's not much green space, um, very few trees. And they've even done studies that say that areas with more trees will have healthier people because you can correlate trees with sometimes socioeconomic status, sometimes mm -hmm. with green space where kids can play. Um, and just something changing that, um, removing the concrete and building a bike path will be huge in terms of how we can impact um, better health. So I, I guess we, we look for ways to improve the environment that will also improve the health of our patients. Thank you very much for your time. I mean, it was really informative. You know, your time is really appreciated. Well, thanks for having me. Great, thanks uh, for coming, you guys. We, we do a lot of different things here at the Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewerage District. Um, we employ a lot of engineers, we employ planners, we have um, people in our budget staff, things like that, um, to help make our stuff run. And so we need all of these people because we do large-scale sewer projects, we work on flood management, um, and we also work in green infrastructure. And so we're really interested in trying to uh, help keep, uh, keep the environment clean, um, help people in our community um, and reduce sewer overflows, reduce the risk of basement backups. Um, and so we do a lot of different environmental projects um, and particularly dealing with water uh, to do those things. Um, Alright, what volunteer opportunities do you offer for your community? Um, MMSD actually has a lot of different um, opportunities here. And so one of the things that we have every single year is we have a summer intern program for young people looking to get into the water industry. There's all different kinds of jobs. They run anywhere from going out and doing survey uh, for sewers, um, doing water course maintenance inspections, so going out in the water course, looking at the different conditions that are out there, water quality sampling, so actually getting out on a boat and going through the different rivers and in the lake. Um, and then we also have a couple other programs where we partner with different community groups to do large-scale volunteer efforts like installing rain barrels in an entire neighborhood or installing rain gardens in an entire neighborhood. So we have a lot of these different opportunities and we post most of them on our website. Um, but I think the one biggest thing, if, especially for people looking to get into a water-related field, uh, especially young people, is, it, is to look at our intern program that comes around uh, every spring is for applications and then the jobs go through summer. How long has the agency been working in greater Milwaukee area? Wow, that's a, that's a really great question. MMSD has been around um, in the area since before the 1900s, so I, I think that the sewer district actually started somewhere around 1890. Um, we built our sewage treatment plant, Jones Island, in 1925, so we've really been around for a long time, um, and, and we do all kinds of things to help the community. Um, what would you recommend to a young person who's interested in this field? Um, I say go for it. It's, this is a, an awesome field to get into. The sciences, um, particularly um, engineering and biology and chemistry and physics, those types of fields are ones that are going to blow up in the future. They're already expanding far beyond. And, um, the environmental field is, is growing really rapidly. And so if you're interested in doing that kind of stuff, I recommend looking into colleges that have programs um, that deal specifically with those things and, and look for programs that um, offer things that you want to see because we need more engineers here, we need more planners, we need more chemists, we need uh, those types of people here. We need these people to run our plans, we need these people to do our planning for us, we need um, them to help us figure out what's going on in our waterways. And so it's really important um, that we get a lot more young people coming into this field um, so that we can help fill that gap in the future. Sure. Um, a couple things about MMSD that uh, a lot of people don't know. We actually make a product um, from our, uh, it's actually a byproduct of our sewage treatment process. It's called Milorganite. 
really cool. Um, and so that's one thing that a lot of people don't know that we do, and a lot of people don't know that we do a lot of these other green programs. So it's really exciting that this sort of field is kind of exploding and that um, people are getting more information about that. And um, like I said before, we do offer summer internship programs. So for young people, please come. Uh, we want you here. Um, and we do sometimes work with uh, different programs that, for high school students too. So if you're interested in exploring the field, um, it, it definitely makes sense to check in with some different um, programs going on at your school so that you guys can see if they're connected with us in some way. So, thank you guys for coming.